Hey church, welcome to another devotion. I am the privilege of recording this on one of those incredibly hot days, so you're all talking about the heat. And the first comment is always, can you believe how hot it is? And then the next comment is, I know when it's even hotter tomorrow. So enjoy it, embrace it, get an ice lolly and uh, the hose out and run under the sprinkler. But um, today we're talking about um, an incredible set of relationships in the Bible, and it's Paul, Philemon, and Onesimus. And really, it's a great story of salvation, forgiveness, grace, and ultimately discipleship, leading someone into fulfilling their God-given destiny. And um, I guess just to quickly paint the scene, the three main characters today uh, are the Apostle Paul, during this time, he's uh, under house arrest in Malta, but he does a wonderful thing when he's under house arrest. He opens his house and he has visitors. And of course, what he does is he shares the good news, the gospel of Jesus. Um, I guess the first little note at this point is just because of your circumstances, uh, they may be hard, they may not be ideal, but even in those circumstances, God can use you, can use your house. But before he uses your house, he needs to use your heart. So I just want to encourage you, have an open heart and an open house in whatever situation. So we've got Paul, then we've got Philemon, and he is a great guy. Um, and he's in Colossae and he's opening his house up to the early church. So we think he was quite a wealthy man because he could do this. Um, and also we think he's wealthy because of our next character, Onesimus, which is uh, one of Philemon's slaves who most scholars kind of think he stole something or did something wrong and he actually ran away from Philemon or Philemon. I'm going to say it differently all the time because I grew up one way and now I've been told it's another way. So you know what it's like. So we have these three people, all different journeys, um, but they're all going to end up in the same place, which is living their God-given destinies, which is the goal for all of us. No matter where we come from, what walk of life, whether we're uh, full-time ministers, whether we're business people, or, or whether we're on the run from our past, or worried about a future that God still wants to redeem, restore, and, and take us to an incredible destiny with him. So what happens is, while Paul's opening his house and his heart uh, in Malta, Onesius actually comes along and hears this open invite. Um, and Paul and Onesius start this incredible relationship. Uh, Onesius accepts Jesus into his life and begins this discipleship story and his life becomes transformed and changed. This is something that we all just, I, I just can't encourage you enough. You need to A, be a disciple, and then when you can, you need to disciple others. This is the Apostle Paul being an incredible discipler, and this is Onesius saying, hey, I actually need to be discipled. I need to be led. I, I, I need help. But what ultimately happens is, which tends to be the case when you spend time with Jesus or around people of God, is you have to make a decision about what next. And for Anesius, it was reconciling with Philemon or Philemon. And Philemon um, was in another part of the world, so there was a journey to be made practically, but the real journeys had to be made in people's hearts toward each other. The Bible says in Philemon 16.16, which is, Paul writing to Philemon about Anesius, he says, no longer, he's essentially saying, welcome Anesius back, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a dearly loved brother. He is especially so to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. He's actually saying, hey, it's time to open your heart, open your house again, and let's make forgiveness and grace the number one agenda in this. What Anesius realized that being a slave wasn't just about where he was living, it was actually about the state of his heart. So even though he ran from the thing that he thought was captive, being on the run from your past or being on the run from stuff you've done wrong, it's just another form of slavery. So Anesius' discipleship journey took him to a place where he was like, I need to get right, not just with God, but with others. 
the great story and the way it ends is wonderful. He goes back, they are reconciled, there's forgiveness and love. And then we actually hear back uh, about 50 years later, there's writing from um, one, one of the writers called Ignatius, and he actually refers to Onesimus as the Bishop of Ephesus. So I don't know about you, but that gives me the impression that not only did he flee, he found God, he was discipled, he reconciled, and then he was launched into the plans God had for him, which was to be the Bishop of Ephesus to see God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And um, that's my prayer. So I guess what I want to just encourage you on is firstly, open your heart and your house. Be a disciple and disciple others and apologize and forgive wherever you can. Love you, church. Have a great rest of the day. Speak soon. Bye.